Hello, welcome to the second part of lecture 7. Um, as we explained in the first part, uh, the diode can be either forward biased or reverse biased. In the forward biasing, we connect the B-type material to the positive terminal of the battery, we connect the N-type material to the negative terminal of the battery, and in that case, electrons are, in ca are able to cross the, um, the depletion region and to cross the Get the potential barrier that exists and then allow allowing current to, thus allowing current to move um, in the reverse biasing uh, as we have seen in the previous uh, part what you have you have a, a diode looks like this and then what you do you connect the uh, the anode you connect it to the negative side of the battery and the cathode to the positive side of the battery so this one here is the n n side n type material we call it the cathode this one here is a p-type material and this is a battery here as a result the electrons are being pushed away even further from the depletion region here and uh, what is happening is that the, uh, the, the the negative terminal of the battery will even uh, will create a similar situation on the n-type making it even more difficult for current to conduct so in this case there is no current that flows or eff effectively there is very little negligible current that flows um, and uh, this results in widening the depletion region between the uh, the uh, B-type material and the type material, as we explained. Now, this will continue. You can you, what you can do. You can you can increase this um, battery voltage until, like all material, it will reach some breakdown point. It will it will break at one moment, and it will allow current uh, to flow uh, in this direction from the cathode to the anode. And some some transistors do work in the breakdown region. Um, usually, the most the, the the common use for diodes is as rectifiers, but in some cases we use them as voltage regulators, as I will explain to you later. And this is really uh, when they reach the breakdown region. So the breakdown voltage means you apply a very high uh, reverse voltage, making the cathode way higher than the anode until you exceed the breakdown voltage and then suddenly a large number of electrons will be free from their valence uh, from their valence bands and then become available for conduction and then the diode starts to conduct in this case so now we start to move from the device way of looking at the diode into look, looking at it as, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a relationship between voltage and current we already discussed the band gap uh, definition we discussed the all type of diffusion uh, the potential barrier and so on now what is happening in this diode is that you if you try to draw the relationship between the voltage across it and the current going through it and here when I say V I mean the voltage of the anode relative to the cathode remember that voltage itself the voltage itself is not defined for one point this is the voltage of the anode relative to the cathode and for forward biasing we made we may we make the anode positive relative to the cathode or in other words we make the b-type material positive relative to the n-type material what will happen when you increase this voltage what will happen when you increase this positive voltage as shown here you'll see that the current will start gradually and slowly and slowly and slowly to increase and then suddenly when the applied voltage applied forward voltage exceeds the potential barrier suddenly you get a sudden rise in the current and actually in this case it looks pretty much like a switch a switch the voltage across it does not change but the current across it can can go from a very small value up to very large value so in this area the the uh, BN junction effectively behaves like a diode. In some models, there are so many models to simulate a diode. In one of them, at least, or a couple of them, we consider this line to be vertical. We ignore the slope of this line. You can see it has a slope. So V and there is a relationship between V and I. Sometimes we ignore this slope and assume it to be vertical. So in other words, once it conducts, the voltage across the diode will, will be equal to 0.7 volts. In some other applications, we consider the dynamic resistance, the slope, which is really the slope, this tiny slope that we have here. And this tiny slope, you can simply find it by getting the ratio between uh, delta F and delta I. If you draw this triangle here, for example, this is a change delta, F, delta I, and this one here is a change delta F. 
you can get this uh, change of course delta f to delta i and this slope by the way is expected to be a very small number it's few ohms 2 ohm 3 ohm because the current does not change that much with the change of the voltage and the ideal case it's completely vertical now if you apply negative voltage as shown here so you make the cathode or the n type term side more positive than the anode as we agree as I mentioned to you there will be very little current conducting very little current very little current until suddenly the diode reaches its breakdown voltage and then it will suddenly allow large current to flow this is when um, this region of operations called the breakdown region this is called reverse bias region some diodes are, de are designed to work in the breakdown region as zeners and I will explain to you that later uh, the most important thing is that when the diode is reverse biased or even forward biased the current should not exceed a certain value otherwise you exceed the power rating and then the diode can burn so we can make it operate in, in, the, in the reverse region we can make it operate in the breakdown region we can make it operate in the forward region as shown here but in all cases we should not allow the current to exceed certain value because in that case the, the power going through the diode would be too high and then it can it can cause the diode to overheat and even to burn so as I explained so far this is the complete um, VI characteristics of the diode if you make the B type region more positive than the N type this is called forward biasing or we call it when you make the anode more positive than the cathode there will be a little bit very tiny current going through until you reach exceed the 0.7 voltage which is a potential barrier we explained earlier uh, and then suddenly be a sudden jump in the current in some models we can consider this line to be vertical some we can take into account the resistance and this resistance here which is delta delta v over delta i is a very tiny number few ohms in the reverse region this is the reverse bias region very little current is flowing we are making the n type material more positive than the b type material or we are making the cathode more positive than the anode very little current is flowing until the diode reaches the breakdown voltage this is when the current starts i am not showing the curve here in full but the current will start to go again will grow very fast with very little change of the voltage and this line in some applications we consider it to be vertical some diodes are designed to work in this in in this breakdown region as regulators as i explained to you earlier but in that case we have in that case here and in the forward bias region we have to limit the current to uh, to be able to protect the diode so now we move from the device part to the circuit analysis part when we we start to analyze the diode there are a number of models we can use and the nearest mechanical expression I can think of it is that of a one uh, of one way water valve. A diode is really one way water valve. It allows uh, water to flow in only one direction while it, it completely blocks it in another direction. So if you have a pipe, this, uh, this is a pipe here, and you have one of these valves, these valves will open only in current going in this direction, while it will not open for current in the opposite direction. This is exactly what a diode is. It's a one di direction uh, current valve. Now, there are a number of models. Some of them are very simple and some are more complex to give us more accurate value. The first one is the ideal model, which is the one shown here. It's called the ideal model of the diode. It's simply saying, as long as you apply, if you make the cathode more positive than the anode, then the diode is, is reverse biased. There is zero current. Okay? This means that the switch is open. It's a switch and the switch is open. It does not allow any current to go through. But when the voltage suddenly reaches zero, then this um, diode will turn on. And then the current can take any value depending on the other components of the circuit. The other components of the circuit will have to limit the current. And in that sense, it represents a closed switch. So it allows only the switching on once the voltage just exceeds zero and then it, it, it simply opens circuit when it is less than zero. Now, a more practical model that takes into account the potential barrier is the one shown here. So for all voltage below 0.7, we say that the current flowing through the diode is small. 
but once the, the applied voltage to the diode exceeds 0.7 the potential barrier value then it now it looks like a closed switch okay and the current will be determined by the external components the resistors and other components in the circuit so in all this part here from any negative voltage up to 0.7 it looks like an open circuit while when it reaches 0.7 it looks really like a voltage source of value 0.7 and a voltage source really looks like a, a closed switch as well because once you exceed 0.7 all current will be able to go through so this is also one possibility we call this voltage here the on voltage of the diode and is usually taken as 0.7 this is a number we're going to be using on and on over and over again of course we can go to more complicated model one more complete complete model so say in the forward direction when the b-type material is more positive than the n-type material the current will be zero up, up to when you reach 0.7 when you reach 0.7 the current start to, to grow with a certain slope and this slope takes into account uh, the ratio between delta f over delta i this slope is a parameter of the diode so this slope you can you can uh, you can find in the data sheet of the diode in the reverse bias we assume there is a zero, very little current, or we can take into account the slope here. There will be a very tiny slope as well. Here in this case, this, this represents very high resistance. So this one represents very small resistance. This one represents very high resistance. We can take this one into account as well. So the, the diode has two real, really regions of operation. Or actually, let's put it in a more accurate three. First one is forward bias, which is this one. This one is reverse bias, where there is zero current. And the, th the third one is when you reach the breakdown, which is not here, shown here in this, in this model. So, as I explained to you earlier, the diode is effectively a switch. It allows current to flow in one direction only. In a circuit like this one, we have a battery and a resistor and a diode. The diode, this is the anode and this is the cathode. This is a B-type material, and this is the N-type material. It only this this is a switch that allows current only in this direction. This battery is trying to push current in this direction, which is the same direction that's allowed by the diode. As a result, if you analyze this circuit, your your immediate assumption is that this diode is in the forward bias region and it's, it's turning is allowing current to go through. So what we can do, we can replace this diode here. One possibility to use a complete to uh, use a practical model is to replace this diode by 0.7 volts uh, battery. This one here represents a drop across the uh, the uh, the depletion region that we have. Now, of course, in a circuit like this one, this is the opposite. This is the B, this is a B-type material. This is the N-type material. This is the anode this is the cathode the diode only allows current in this direction okay from the anode to the cathode while here we are connecting a battery this battery this is the positive side the negative side so it's trying to push current in the opposite direction so here the switch will not open unless of course this voltage exceeds the breakdown voltage so it will not allow the current to go through so in this case it's it's a valid assumption to assume that this diode is in the reverse bias region it, re it represents effectively open circuit and the, all the better because it's an open circuit there's no current or very little current we can ignore it in the circuit and the, all this voltage drop will appear across the diode so the cathode uh, the cathode and the voltage between of the cathode relative to the anode will be exactly equal to the bias voltage okay let's consider an example here we have uh, a diode circuit uh, we are applying a voltage of 100 volts and uh, we have a resistor of 560 ohm and this we have this diode and would like to determine the current I flowing in this circuit using three different approaches we have to use the ideal model the ideal model means that this diode will turn on once you have a positive voltage when the anode is positive than the cathode so in other words the turning on uh, voltage is zero this is the first model I've shown you the second one is the practical model. Practical model means that when the, the, the applied voltage exceeds 
0.7 which is the own voltage of the diode then this diode will conduct and in that case I replace the diode with a battery battery equal to 0.7 and I explained to you earlier it's gonna be the it, it, it will appear with this polarity here the anode will have a higher potential than the cathode by 0.7 okay uh, the last one is simply to use the complete model and the complete model uh, simply uh, takes into account the on voltage which is 0.7 and it takes into account also the on resistance so it assumes there is some some resistance to the slope in the forward region usually I'm here putting 10 ohm but usually it's smaller than that so let's see how we can solve this circuit using all these three approaches in the first in the first case because of the polarity of the of the uh, of the battery the battery is trying to push current in this direction and the diode allows current only in this direction as well i can the valid assumptions assume the diode is forward biased and if the diode is forward biased it looks like a switch and in that case its own resistance is zero this is called the ideal model if its own resistance is zero then the current i flowing is equal to 100 divided by 560 is equal to 0.178 amperes this is a very simple model it does not take into account that the diode has an, inter an, an internal um, uh, potential barrier and i'll be letting you know which model to use in solving these examples the second model is the one that i'm showing here um, it's assumed that when the diode is conducting if it conducts then we take into account the 0.7 voltage drop across it so effectively it looks like a battery with a potential difference of 0.7 volts a potential difference of 0.7 volts it's a, it's a, it's a barrier between the anode and the cathode that has to be exceeded so here if you want to calculate uh, of course the battery is trying to push current in this direction and the diode allows current in this direction then the diode will be forward biased it's a valid assumption then the the uh, the current flowing in this direction is 100 minus 0.7 divided by 560 so it's 0 0.1773 amperes it's a little bit different from the one using the ideal model but it's close enough now the third model is a little bit relative it's not that complicated but it takes into account the slope of the iv characteristics so now we say well when the diet conducts it looks something like this its slope it starts at 0.7 but it has also a slope and this slope means a resistance this is a resistance this is delta v over delta i and this resistance is given to us to be equal to 10 to 10 ohm so if you calculate the current in this case it's going to be equal to 100 minus 0.7 divided by 10 plus 560 and this equal to 0.174 uh, this one here is equal to 0.174 and uh, you will see here that uh, as a result of this this current is very close by the way to the others we calculated earlier there is some change but it's also close but you'll see there is a significant drop across the diode here which is equal to 2.44 volts